Standard Canadian English is the greatly homogeneous variety of Canadian English spoken particularly all across Central and Western Canada, as well as throughout Canada among urban middle class speakers from English speaking families, excluding the regional dialects of Atlantic Canadian English. English mostly has a uniform phonology and very little diversity of dialects in Canada compared with the neighbouring English of the United States. The standard Canadian English dialect region is defined by the cot cot merger to Listen tilde, listen, and an accompanying chain shift of vowel sounds, called the Canadian shift. A subset of this dialect geographically at its central core, excluding British Columbia to the west and everything east of Montreal, has been called Inland Canadian English, and is further defined by both of the phenomena known as Canadian raising, the production of o and a, with back starting points in the mouth, and the production of e, with a front starting point and very little glide, almost e. Topic. Phonemic incidents Although Canadian English phonology is part of the Greater North American sound system, and therefore similar to U.S. English phonology, the pronunciation of particular words may have British influence, while other pronunciations are uniquely Canadian. According to the Cambridge History of the English Language, W. Hat perhaps most characterizes Canadian speakers, however, is their use of several possible variant pronunciations for the same word, sometimes even in the same sentence. The name of the letter Z is normally the Anglo-European and French Z, the American Z is less common in Canada, and it is often stigmatized, though the latter is not uncommon, especially among younger Canadians. Lieutenant was historically pronounced as the British, LF Tienant, rather than the American, Lou Tienant, although older speakers of Canadian English, and official usage in military and government contexts, typically still follow the older practice. Most younger speakers and many middle aged speakers have shifted to the American pronunciation. Some middle aged speakers don't even remember the existence of the older pronunciation, even when specifically asked whether they can think of another pronunciation. Only 14-19% of 14-year-olds used the traditional pronunciation in a survey in 1972, and they are meanwhile at, the beginning of 2017 at least 57 years old. In the words adult and composite, the emphasis is usually on the first syllable, as in Britain. Canadians side with the British on the pronunciation of shown n, though the RP pronunciation is n, often lever, liviar, and several other words, bin is pronounced by many speakers as bin, rather than bn, as in southern England, either and neither are more commonly r, and nar, respectively. Furthermore, in accordance with British traditions, schedule can sometimes be dual, process, progress, and project are occasionally pronounced, pros, pers, and prodkit, respectively, harassment is sometimes pronounced, harassment, while leisure is rarely, lr. Again and against are often pronounced, n, enst, rather than, n, enst. The stressed vowel of words such as borrow, sorry or tomorrow is, r, rather than, r. Words like semi, anti, and multi tend to be pronounced smi, nt, and multi, rather than sma, enta, and multa. Loanwords that have a low central vowel in their language of origin, such as llama, pasta, and pajamas, as well as place names like Gaza and Vietnam, tend to have a rather than, which also includes the historical and due to the father bother and cot cot mergers. See below. This also applies to older loans like drama or Apache. The word khaki is sometimes pronounced Cree, the preferred pronunciation of the Canadian Army during the Second World War. Words of French origin, such as clique and niche, are pronounced more like they would be in French, so, click, rather than per kilo liter k, ni, rather than, ent. Pecan is usually, pecan, or, pie can, as opposed to, pecan, more common in the U.S. Syrup is commonly pronounced, serp, or, serp. The most common pronunciation of vase is, vez. The word premier, the leader of a provincial or territorial government, is commonly pronounced prim junior, with prim junior and prim junior being rare variants. Some Canadians pronounce predecessor as pridser and asphalt as ashfalt. A, the latter being also common in Australian English as a, but not in general American or British English. Topic: <laughs> Features shared with general American 
Like most other North American English dialects, Canadian English is almost always spoken with a rhotic accent, meaning that the R sound is preserved in any environment and not dropped after vowels, as commonly done by, for example, speakers in central and southern England where it is only pronounced when preceding a vowel. Like general American, Canadian English possesses a wide range of phonological mergers not found in other major varieties of English, the Mary 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 merger which makes word pairs like berry, berry, carry, carry, harry, harry, parish, parish, etc. as well as trios like arable, arable, arable and Mary, Mary, Mary have identical pronunciations however, a distinction between the Mary and Mary sets remains in Montreal, the father-bother merger that makes lager, lager, con, con, etc. sound identical, the very common horse-horse merger making pairs like for, for, horse, horse, morning, morning, war, war etc. perfect homophones, and the prevalent wine-wine merger which produces homophone pairs like whales, whales, where, where, wine, wine etc. by, in most cases, eliminating, hw, except in some older speakers, in addition to that, flapping of intervocalic, t, and, d, to alveolar tap. Before reduced vowels is ubiquitous, so the words ladder and ladder, for example, are mostly or entirely pronounced the same. Therefore, the pronunciation of the word British in Canada and the US is most often B, while in England it is commonly BT listen. For some speakers, the merger is incomplete and T before a reduced vowel is sometimes not tapped following E or when it represents underlying T, thus greater and greater, and unbidden and unbidden are distinguished. Many Canadian speakers have the typical American dropping of J after alveolar consonants, so that new, duke, Tuesday, suit, resume, lute, for instance, are pronounced new, duck, tuzd, sut, r, zoom, lute. Topic: <laughs> Canadian raising. Perhaps the most recognizable feature of Canadian English is Canadian raising which is found most prominently throughout central and west-central Canada, as well as in parts of the Atlantic provinces. For the beginning points of the diphthongs gliding vowels, a, ah, as in the words height and mice, and, a, ah, as in shout and house, the tongue is often more raised in the mouth when these diphthongs come before voiceless consonants, namely, p, t, k, s, and, f, in comparison with other varieties of English. Before voiceless consonants, a, ah, becomes, tilde tilde. One of the few phonetic variables that divides Canadians regionally is the articulation of the raised allophone of this as well as of a. Ah. In Ontario, it tends to have a mid central or even mid front articulation, sometimes approaching while in the West and Maritimes a more retracted sound is heard, closer to Among some speakers in the prairies and in Nova Scotia, the retraction is strong enough to cause some tokens of raised a ah, to merge with o, oh, so that couch merges with coach, meaning the two sound the same, and about sounds like a boat, this is often inaccurately represented as sounding like a boot, for comic effect in American popular culture. In general American, out is typically at listen, but, with slight Canadian raising, it may sound more like t listen, or, with the strong Canadian raising of the prairies and Nova Scotia, more like IPA, t. Due to Canadian raising, words like height and hide have two different vowel qualities. Also, for example, house as a noun I saw a house and house as a verb where will you house them tonight, have two different vowel qualities, potentially, hs versus has. Especially in parts of the Atlantic provinces, some Canadians do not possess the phenomenon of Canadian raising. On the other hand, certain non-Canadian accents demonstrate Canadian raising. In the U.S., this feature can be found in areas near the border and thus in the upper Midwest, Pacific Northwest, and northeastern New England e Boston, dialects, though it is much less common than in Canada. The raising of ah alone is actually increasing throughout the US and unlike raising of ah and is generally not perceived as unusual by people who do not have the raising. Because of Canadian raising, many speakers are able to distinguish between words such as rider and rider which can otherwise be impossible since North American dialects typically turn both intervocalic t and d into an alveolar flap. Thus rider and rider are distinguished solely by their vowel characteristics as determined by Canadian raising, thus, a split between rider as a diaresis and rider possibly as listen. When not in a raised position before voiceless consonants, a ah, is fronted to a tilde ash before nasals, and low central a ah, elsewhere. The cot-cot merger and the Canadian shift 
Almost all Canadians have the cot cot merger, which also occurs primarily in the western U.S., but often elsewhere in the U.S., especially recently. Speakers do not distinguish the vowels as in cot and as in cot, which merge is either more common in western and maritime Canada or more common in central and eastern Canada, where it might even be fronted. Speakers with this merger produce these vowels identically, and often fail to hear the difference when speakers who preserve the distinction for example, speakers of general American and inland northern American English pronounce these vowels. This merger has existed in Canada for several generations. This merger creates a hole in the short vowel subsystem and triggers a sound change known as the Canadian shift, which involves the front lax vowels a. The a of bat is lowered and retracted in the direction of a, except in some environments. See below. Indeed, a is further back in this variety than almost all other North American dialects. The retraction of a was independently observed in Vancouver and is more advanced for Ontarians and women than for people from the prairies or Atlantic Canada and men. Then, and may be lowered in the direction of a and and or retracted. Studies actually disagree on the trajectory of the shift. For example, Lebove and others 2006 noted a backward and downward movement of in apparent time in all of Canada except the Atlantic provinces, but no movement of was detected. Therefore, in Canadian English, the short a and the short o are shifted in opposite directions to that of the northern city's shift, found across the border in the inland northern U.S., which is causing these two dialects to diverge. The Canadian short a is very similar in quality to the inland northern short o. For example, the production map would be recognized as map in Canada, but mop in the inland north dialect of the U.S. A notable exception to the merger occurs, in which some speakers over the age of 60, especially in rural areas in the prairies, may not exhibit the merger. Other common features Unlike in many American English dialects, A remains a low front vowel in most environments in Canadian English. Raising along the front periphery of the vowel space is restricted to two environments, before nasal and voiced velar consonants, and varies regionally even in these. Ontario and Maritime Canadian English commonly show some raising before nasals, though not as extreme as in many U.S. varieties. Much less raising is heard on the prairies, and some ethnic groups in Montreal show no pre-nasal raising at all. On the other hand, some prairie speech exhibits raising of a, before voiced velars, and with an up-glide rather than an in-glide, so that bag can almost rhyme with vague. For most Canadian speakers, is also realized higher as e before per gram. The first element of r, as in start, tends to be raised. As with Canadian raising, the relative advancement of the raised nucleus is a regional indicator. A striking feature of Atlantic Canadian speech the Maritimes and Newfoundland is a nucleus that approaches the front region of the vowel space, accompanied by strong roticity, ranging from Western Canadian speech has a much more retracted articulation with a longer non-rhotic portion, approaching a mid-back quality, though there is no tendency toward a merger with R. Articulation of R, in Ontario is in a position midway between the Atlantic and Western values, the words origin, Florida, horrible, quarrel, warren, as well as tomorrow, sorry, sorrow, etc. all generally use the sound sequence, as in gory, rather than, as in starry, or, the latter set of words often distinguishes Canadian pronunciation from U.S. pronunciation. The word milk is realized as MK to rhyme with elk by some speakers, MK to rhyme with ilk by others. Traditionally diphthongal vowels such as O, as in boat, and E, as in bait, have qualities much closer to pure vowel in some speakers, especially in the inland region. 